Hey guys, welcome back. This is 4 StarCraft 2 Strategy, your number one location for step-by-step -step strategy and tutorial videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Protoss strategy. We're going to be looking at forcing your Zerg opponent into one base play and then going up to 4 Warp Gate tech and pushing out with that. Uh, so basically, again, this is going to be a Protoss versus Zerg strategy. Uh, our Protoss player in this particular replay is Nani, and the Zerg opponent is Idra. I know it says MYM Sunny. I believe Idra was playing on that, or maybe that's his new name. I'm actually not entirely positive. Uh, but this is Idra, I am certain. Uh, Idra versus Nani. So yeah, uh, what we're going to be taking a look at in this particular replay is walling in your opponent, or not so much walling in, but getting a, a couple of pylons and a couple of cannons, forcing your Zerg opponent into one base play. A lot of Zerg players like to go two base, a lot of Zerg players like to do that fast expand to get that early, early strong economy. Um, and then getting these two pylons and two photon cannons right outside their base, you're going to force them to stay inside of their base, and you're going to force them into a situation where they may not necessarily be comfortable with, especially if they go into a game planning to do that fast expand. Um, having them stuck in this one base is going to put them kind of out of their element. Um, it also is probably likely to change up their game plan as well. So basically what we're going to be taking a look at starting out with again is getting that first pylon uh, and then the first thing we're going to be getting is a uh, gateway and then immediately afterwards we're going to follow that by getting a forge. Um, we're going to be using that forge to go ahead and drop down drop down those cannons right outside their base so we can be pretty certain that we are seeing this fast expand and this is actually the point where we're going to be making this decision to go ahead and drop that forge and get those cannons um, as you can see at the moment we don't have a forge we're just building a gateway we've started off with a standard opener um, but we are now getting that forge again because we haven't seen an extractor yet. We've seen this spawning pool coming up. It's been up for quite some time. It's over 50% done building. We have yet to see an extractor. That tells us that he's not likely going for tech. Um, he's not likely going for anything but zerglings and a fast expand. Um, and we are confirmed of this when we see this expansion right here. So at seeing this expansion, what we're going to immediately do is go ahead and drop down these two pylons. Uh, and you do want to leave just a little bit of space in between. But basically what this is going to force them to do is it's going to force them to either suicide their units um, and lose a ton of economy as such um, because, you know, they're going to just be basically throwing away money by attacking this with the cannons behind it. Or it's going to force them to go behind to these back rocks. So it kind of puts them in a tough position. Now they have a little window of opportunity here. Uh, while the cannons are still building, they can try to take out these pylons. Uh, these cannons do end up warping in just in time, though, as those zerglings were a little bit later than they would have otherwise been, again, because of this fast, hat fast hatchery. So we're, we're deciding to go for this wall, and I'll say it again, we're deciding to go for this wall and in seeing that they're getting the fast hatchery, um, the fast expansion. And we were aware of the fact of that fast expansion simply due to the fact that we moved in, we saw the spawning pool building, we saw saw zero extractors. Now, if they weren't going for that fax expansion, they would have likely dropped an extractor down earlier, and they would have started mo getting gas so they, they could possibly go to speed links, so they could move to main links, or, or so that they could upgrade to layer tech. Uh, so now we do have this wall off here. We've got the cannons right behind it. Um, again, he's kind of forced to stay in his base at this point. Um, and Taking a, b a look back at our base here, I mean, we haven't gotten too much because, of course, we've dumped a lot of resources into this, but we're going to make sure we take full advantage of it. Um, we know one of two things are going to happen. They either have two choices. Uh, they can either break down these rocks to go ahead and move in to destroy these cannons, or they can break down these rocks to go ahead and move into our base. Now, we're kind of protecting our base with the small choke covered by the zealot. Um, we're also going to get some additional zealots to back it up. Uh, taking a look up here, we are finally dropping our cybernetics core because, again, we are, are going to be switching into that warp gate tech. Um, but we know that they have those two options. We know that they're not going to be breaking through here because it really doesn't make any sense. If they had tried to run zerglings down here, they would just continuously get pummeled by these um, and by the time they take down the pylons they would have lost so many units that it just would have been a tremendous uh Tremendous loss for them, tremendous disadvantage. So we kinda know at this point that they're gonna be getting rid of these destructible rocks and this opens up an avenue for us now. Now we have this brand new entrance right in their base, this giant entrance. We can just stream right into their base once we get our four warp gates out. because um, again we know that this is pretty much the only decision that they have at that point. Now we do see this overlord moving into our base, he is getting some scouting information. We're going to be trying to chrono boost out the stalker so that we can stop him from seeing everything that we have. We don't want him to know exactly what we're getting. Although it is pretty likely at this point that a Protoss player would be going for that 4 warp gate tech since it's just so very strong early on in the game. Um, but again, the, less, the more information we can deny our opponent, the better, better off we are. 
Uh, so as you can see, that warp gate research is coming through right now. We're going to try to use our chrono boost on these as best we can. I'm um, getting up those two additional gateways because again, we're going to be going with that four warp gate push. Um, we're also going to be researching up our level one upgrades. This enables us to. Uh, this is kind of the most effective upgrade for Protoss versus Zerg. Um, it enables your zealots to two shot Zerglings instead of three shot, and that's really a huge difference. So as you can see here, the, the Zerg opponent did break down these back rocks, uh, and then moving forward and he took down the cannons, because this is pretty much the only way he could effectively take down the cannons. Uh, and he, he, again, he was left to one of two choices. He could either kill these cannons so that he would be able to get his expansion up, or he could have tried to attack us. Now attacking us again would have been really bad for him, simply because of this choke. If we saw the attack coming, we could have even dropped some cannons behind here to make it even more difficult. And if he had moved over here, um, all we really would have had to do is bring some stalkers down and they could have picked off the zerglings as they tried to destroy these destructible rocks. So again, the whole point here is that we kind of forced them into this, into this position after seeing that they were likely to go for that fast expand because of that lack of extractor. We forced them into that one base play, um, and then we're responding by getting up these four warp gates. As you can see, our warp gates are just coming in now. The warp gate research did just finish. Um, and this is the point we're going to push out. You basically want to push out as soon as your warp gate research is done finishing. Um, again, we do have these level one upgrades coming, and those should be nearly done by the time we walk in, too. Um, especially with some Chrono Boost, we're definitely going to be able to get this up just in time. So dropping proxy pylons, obviously very effective. Uh, go ahead and move a probe up with your army and try to find a couple of good locations to drop them. Um, ideally, you want to put a pylon in more than one location. In case they destroy one, you'll have that other one as backup to warp in units, uh, rather than having to wait for units to march across the field here. Um, he does try to move up and kill this probe, and we do an excellent job of microing it back into our army as our army is pushing forward. Um, that forces him to either engage our army to try to get to the probe or to pull back. He opts to pull back. Definitely the wise decision. So again, we do know that he destroyed this destructible rocks because we saw the Zerglings run from this direction to kill our photon cannons. So we know that this door is wide open. So we're just going to go ahead and move in. Um, again, bringing our probe forward, we're going to make an additional proxy pylon to reinforce closer to where the battle is. Um, and we're just going to be pushing forward. That level 1 upgrade is finally finished here. So our Zealots and Stalkers do have that advantage over these unupgraded units. And uh, we're just going to push forward, and this is pretty much going to be the end of the game. Um, because they had dumped so many resources into trying to kill those cannons, and because that expansion was delayed, um, they were kind of thrown off their game, and they weren't able to properly do the build that they were looking to do, um, and weren't able to probably respond to what we did here. So as you can see, the Zerg player does go ahead and call a good game, and that is a victory for our Protoss player. So taking a look, another quick synopsis here. Move into the game early on. Well, we saw the likelihood of that fast expand because of that lack of extractor and the spawning pool was building. Um, so we kind of know at that point that a fast expand is coming because if he's going for any sort of one base play, he's going to need that extractor again to either get that to get those roaches out to get the banelings nest or to get that layer or that speed upgrade. Um, you, you're, it's going to be necessary for a Zerg player to get an extractor when the spawning pool is building if they plan to go for that one base play. Um, so in not seeing that, you kind of know that this is likely coming. At that point, we went ahead and dropped our forge. And when we saw for certain that this was building here, we created that choke with those uh, pylons, backed that up with some cannons, forced them to stick to that one base play, and then we tech straight up to four warp gate research. So again, guys, this has been Force StarCraft 2 Strategy, your number one location for step-by-step -step strategy and tutorial videos. If you guys like our videos and you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to our channel. Keep watching and keep owning. Speed links do very well against the stalkers. Also, speed links are going to do really well once you get that Nidus Worm up and uh, taking out the mineral patch of the Protoss player. So that's kind of the goal, that's kind of the idea here. Um, so as you can see, we are going to be researching the uh, Glale re reconstitution here.